In this video, we'll discover a guide to an organized mind. So, now that you understand all the benefits of an organized mind, you've got some ideas of the areas of your life that can be improved by taking back this control. You need to know how to get to that point. We've already looked at the practical steps that you can take at home, at work, and in your personal life to get rid of the chaos and clutter. This can make life simpler and happier. But how can you take practical steps to organize your mind? Here are a few top tips to get you started. Make lists and journals. Many people find that making lists or starting a journal is a good way to clear their minds. It will get rid of all the clutter that prevents them from moving forward in their lives. You may find that you're unable to focus on the tasks that you need to accomplish because they seem to be running over and over in your head. Composing a list of all the jobs and chores that you need to accomplish will help to set those intrusive thoughts free. Having a checklist of everything you need to get done will help you to see at a glance all that must be got through by the end of the day, week, or month. When you can tick each one off, you will experience a great sense of well-being at a job well done. Journaling is another useful strategy. It can be used to great effect to clear your mind and get rid of the clutter that prevents you from moving forward with your life. You may be feeling anxious, stressed, or depressed about situations in your life. Keeping notes in a diary or journal will help to bring some clarity to the situation, put it into perspective, and enable you to find a way forward. It will also help you to release the tension that builds up when you're unable to express yourself and unleash the feelings that are causing you misery. Journaling also helps you to spot patterns in your life. It helps you to identify precisely what makes you feel miserable, stressed, angry, or anxious. You can take action to avoid those triggers or address them in a healthy way the next time those situations arise. Learn to let go. It can be hard to learn how to let go since many of us are raised in an environment where we cling on to things, whether those be possessions, emotions, or relationships. Unfortunately, this tends to apply to both the positive and negative ones. Everyone will go through times in their lives when they feel unhappy, angry, or frustrated. This is completely normal and is something that cannot be avoided. Nor should it be. The key to overcoming those feelings, though, lies in how you deal with them. Do you dwell on them and ruminate over them repeatedly? Or do you find a way to release them from your mind and let them go? Mental clutter and chaos can ensue if you don't let go of the negative emotions and feelings that you're clinging on to for dear life. The longer you spend focusing on them, the less time and energy you have available for the positive emotions that you need to get the most out of life. While all of this makes sense, it can be harder than you imagined to let go of those negativities. So here are a few expert tips to help you. Face the pain. If you're feeling anxious or stressed, your knee-jerk reaction will be to protect yourself and hide from the emotional upheaval. However, you need to go through the negativity to begin the process of recovery. If you delay the process, you'll never be able to completely overcome what you're feeling. Don't lie to yourself. Identify every part of the negative emotions you're experiencing. Don't try to convince yourself that things aren't as bad as they could be. Instead, acknowledge it, recognize it, and then accept it. Remember, nothing will last forever. Negative emotions are stronger than positive ones. But you must bear in mind that no matter how bad it feels, they won't last forever. Self-reflect. Don't get trapped in a negative downward spiral. Reflect on what's happened and work out how you can avoid descending into a pit where more bad things will inevitably happen. Don't fear the future. Although you have negative emotions now, the future is bright and you can rise up and embrace it only after you let these negative feelings go. Avoid multitasking. We're all trying to juggle more than at any other time in history, so it isn't too surprising that we all try to multitask. Yet this isn't as helpful as you might imagine. Multitasking will make you less, not more, productive. Evidence has shown that if you shift between tasks, you can waste as much as 40% of productive time. While you feel like you're achieving more, the chances are that you aren't. If you put all of your focus on one task, it will be completed more efficiently and also more effectively. Multitasking has a negative impact on the quality of the output you produce. It's even been shown that multitasking impacts negatively on the way your brain works, slowing it down and making it less efficient. That means you need to eliminate unnecessary distractions that are causing your mental clutter and narrow down your focus to the task in hand. Make decisions and stick to them. 
When you're able to make a decision and stick to it, you can really weed out the indecisive clutter and chaos that fills your head when you haven't planned a specific course of action. While it may sound simple to make a decision, the reality isn't always that easy. Many of us waver between possibilities and struggle to come down on one side or the other when there are two different options. The key to effective and decisive decision making is to focus on what's really important and to bear in mind that gratification will almost certainly not be immediate. You must be self-disciplined once you've committed to a course of action and not be tempted to fall at the first hurdle. If you don't stick with the decision you've made, you'll never be able to achieve a clear mind and take back control of your life. Be kind to yourself. If you're to truly organize your mind and find inner peace, you'll need to learn to start being kind to yourself. While most of us agree that kindness brings better quality to your life, many of us still fail to show ourselves the self-care that makes us happier and more positive. But what does being kind to yourself actually mean? How does it look in practice? Essentially, you'll have to learn how to nurture yourself. After all, you can't rely on kindness being shown to you by strangers, but you can always show it to yourself. Being kind to yourself means looking after your own physical and mental well-being. It means having disciplined health habits and living a balanced lifestyle. This comes in the shape of getting enough quality sleep, taking exercise to strengthen your muscles, keep your heart healthy and help you stay flexible, and drinking plenty of water. It means going to the doctor if you experience a health problem and adopting healthy coping mechanisms to get you through the challenges and stresses of everyday life. Remember, too, that being kind to yourself is an ongoing process. It doesn't mean taking a couple of days to nurture yourself if you're feeling especially low or distressed. It means taking regular time every day and week to look after your well-being. Don't wait until you're sick to care for yourself. Don't wait until you're exhausted before you take a break. Prevention is better than cure, so make sure you adopt a maintenance self-care regime. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.